Let's create a test in MyOpenMath. Go to MyOpenMath and click on the course in which you would like to create the test. At the top, you can click Add an item, or if you wish to go into a module, you can add an item there. I'll just click it at the top here. Now the item we will add is an assessment, and at the top I'll name it Test 1. If you wish to put a sum summary or some student instructions, you can do that. Um, I do not keep mine open for ungraded practice, but you could do that if you wish. And if you have a previous test, you could actually copy the options and settings from a previous test, but this is a new one, so we'll put none. Now, you can show your test questions one question at a time or all at once. I'm going to go with all at once. You can show your questions in homework style, which means that the students will um, be able to check each question one by one, or you can show the students the questions quiz style so that they will have to answer all questions at once and get a grade at the end. I prefer that style for a test. Now, I allow my students to take this test once, so I'm going to change that number of times it can be taken. And since my students will put one answer in and get one grade at the end, I will change the number of tries to once since this is a test. Now, to verify that they don't see their scores until the end, I change this option where it says each question immediately. I normally go with at the end of the assessment or the total score at the end or even no scores at all, but most of my students really like to see their scores at the end of the assessment. Um, now during the assessment should show the answers. I do not want that to happen, so I will either choose after it's submitted or never. Now, work deals with your show your work boxes, and so I want my students to be able to look back at their work after it is submitted. I do use show your work boxes, and I want them to be able to see their scores after it's submitted, but again, that's your individual choice. Now, students can view the correct answers. I'm going to put after the due date in case some of my students are taking this prior to a due date. And if you have a particular gradebook category you wish it to go to, you can click that also. Display options, you should be aware that there is an, an option here to shuffle the item order. That would be the question items. I normally do not use that, but I do like to use show your work boxes. Now, I like show your work boxes during the assessment, but if you prefer students to upload work after an assessment, you could choose those options as well. I use the work entry type called essay. That way the student can actually type their work into an answer box, or it also gives uh, an upload option. And in the case of a student taking this online somewhere else, I click where it says, make it hard to print. I do like that. And if you wanted your students to have the same version of questions, just different numbers, you could also click that option. For the time limit and control, if you allow your students to take a test late, you would need to allow that. Um, you know, maybe you could allow one late pass. If you do not allow late exams, just take that off. Now, I do allow late exams. so I'm going to go ahead and put allow late passes. I also normally put a time limit of about 75 minutes on a normal chapter unit test. And I also password protect mine, so add a password. Now, if you have a prerequisite requirement, this allows you to do that. Now, helpful hints. I do not want my students to see the hints during the test, nor should they see the video, nor should they have access to written examples. If you want a student to be able to message you during his or her test, you could click that option, or you could add even a resource. With the grading, since I uh, allow my students to take a test late, I do give them a 20% grade deduction if they take a test late. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in from my question in my test. And you create the assessment. Now, when you create the assessment, there are no questions up here. So let's go ahead and add some questions. I'm going to go to all libraries, and let's just go ahead and make a factoring test. 
Uh, so I'm going to put factor GCF. It will generate a lot of questions. Now be aware, under times used, the higher this number, the more reliable the question. That means this first question has been used 34,000 plus times. Um, so that is a good question. Let me go ahead and see what it looks like. Here's what it looks like, factor the GCF. And then the student would just click in the answer box and they would type in the answer. Okay, so we'll go ahead and use that one. Also be aware you can click the, um, pre the topic type and that will alphabetize all the types of questions to your calculated questions, questions that say choices, those would be multiple choice questions, essay questions. You will see here there are some multiple part questions. And if you go on down to where it says number and number functions, those are the typical questions that the students type in the answer. You'll see the one that I previously had chosen. Let's say I go ahead and choose maybe a grouping problem. Um, and we'll just do a factor of the trinomial with not uh, one as the leading coefficient and maybe a factor of the perfect square. So I can do that, click add, and let me see how many questions I have now. I have four questions. Let's get one more. Let's go ahead and try in to throw in a trinomial. All right, so let's say, say that I want a multiple choice trinomial. Here we go. Uh, let's do this one. Oh, go ahead and add that. Now I have five questions, and again, you can always look at the preview to see what the questions look like. Remember, this is my multiple choice question. Now, I have them just in the default one point. Let's say I want to change those to 20 points each. I go up to the default points and just type in 20, and it will automatically change those. Now, let me let you see what the test looks like real quick. If I click preview, I can let you see what the students will see. They have, will see all of the questions at once because that's how I set it up. They'll see a timer at the top and notice there's an add your work button in each question. If I click add your work, the student can type in any work if he or she has that or they could even upload and attach a file. Now, let's say I decided not to show the work on question one, but I wanted to show the work on the others. You can still go over here to the individual questions and click actions and you can change the settings on an individual question. I wanna remove that work button on question one. So I'm gonna go over here and just put no. I don't wanna use my default show your work. I'll save the settings. And now when I preview this again in my student preview, you'll notice question one does not have the show your work button, but question two does. So I have my test exactly like I want it. I'm gonna go done. Notice since I didn't put it in a module, it just appears at the top of my course. Now, I already have my Canvas course ready, so I just wish to import this one test one into my existing Canvas course. So I go over here to export, and then I will click in the pull down to select the individual items. I do not want to export the entire course. If you do that, it will overwrite all of your other previous assignments that you may have placed in your Canvas course. Um, if you are creating this for the first time and you're about to export and import everything, that would be okay, but I'm only gonna export my test one. Now I will uh, go to test one, and then I will go down here, make sure my LMS is Canvas. A lot of these features are automatically clicked. However, I do like to set my due dates in Canvas, so I normally click that. And if you wish to have this open in a new window, you could click that as well. Then I will download my export cartridge. And when it downloads, it will download as the IMSCC file. Now, let me go to my Canvas course. I will go over here where it says import existing content. And I will go up to the top where it says Canvas course export package. That is that file that we had downloaded of test one. I will choose the file from my downloads. And there it is, it was that one. And then I will go ahead and click all content because that is the only assignment in that course export package. 
and it will just take a moment. It's queued and it will download. And after it is finished, I go to modules and I go all the way to the bottom because there will be a new module created that's called imported content. So now I can pick this up and I can drop and drag all around. Okay, and then of course, if you don't want that module, you could either unpublish it or delete it after you have put this test in the appropriate place. Now, one more thing, uh, when this imports, you can go over to your assignments. And if you had your assignments weighted a certain way, a lot of times this will create a new assignment category. So you may need to move your test one down to the test format and make sure that the weights of your weighted assignments are still correct. I hope this helps you a lot in creating a test in MyOpenMath. You have a great day.